I'm here in Gundagai with Tim Lord, manager of KO Angus. Tim, water is life and time is money, mate. Definitely. Without water, you haven't got life. <laughs> Since taking over here about three years ago, you guys have done an extensive amount of work with fences and with water. So with the property, um, when, when we purchased the property here, we virtually had a blank canvas. So we started from scratch and refenced the property, um, putting in new yards, um, watering systems, laneways, um, trying to make the, the farm as efficient as we, as we can, trying to save the cattle walking around to back to dams. Um, so if we've got troughs in every paddock, it's just saving the cattle walking long distances and burning, burning energy um, walking around to those water points. So when we've set the watering system up on the property, we've tried to reduce um, the labour and maintenance factor going forward. So for us, what we've done is we've gone for a, um, a trough with a, with a covered float valve so the cattle can't disturb the float and um, make, the, make the trough overflow by pushing the valve down or breaking it, causing damage. Um, every trough, because of the high head uh, water pressure here, we put a pressure reducing valve on every trough and also a shut off valve. But the good design with this is the cattle can't rub, can't rub its recessed in the trough. Um, so for us, yeah, hopefully there's no issues moving forward. So the work is, you've spent over the last three years on dividing your paddocks and putting water points in them, yep. it's starting to bear fruit in your pasture, Tim? Yeah, definitely. We're, um, we've just been able to utilise the pasture a lot better with, with the division of the, with the paddocks. And this has been a pretty dry start to winter. You were saying you probably only had about an inch of rain in the last month. Definitely. I think it's, uh, yeah, hopefully we're going to get a break. It's just going to be a little bit late. And so, But we are, um, we are looking a little bit tight, that's for sure. Yeah, but it's still looking nice and green here, yeah, isn't it? We and are, your cattle are putting on good weight. We are fortunate. The property is still looking well. And, yeah, we are still going ahead, but looking for a drink of rain. So big message here, divide up your paddocks, rotate and you'll, it'll pay off really quickly. Just utilise the feed better, definitely. So Tim, every paddock pretty much has a trough except for those few that are still on the river country and you're planning to put troughs in them as well. Yeah, so so long term the whole idea is trying to drought proof um, the property. So we've got a, a trough nearly in every property, as you said, apart from the river. Um, long term we will look to probably put um, troughs on the river country as well just because the river here is it fluctuates so much. It's good to keep your cattle out of the river as well, particularly in dry times, isn't it? Yep, yep. Try and conserve nature. That's the biggest thing, trying to stop the erosion on the banks and have foot issues walking in the mud. And yeah. And clean water puts weight on animals quicker than dirty water, doesn't it? Definitely. So the, the water that's coming up here is all um, spring-fed out of the hills. So we thought that was a, the best option rather than coming out of the river. So it's, it's good, clean, fresh water. So you've running all of this, how many k's of pipeline are you running at the moment? Um, we've done about half of the property so far with the watering system we've put in and there's about five kilometres of water line we've put in. And you've, we're up here, what, about 180 metres above the front driveway of the property here? From the, It's a fair head on this water, isn't it? Fr from the solar system um, and the submersible pump, it's 180 metres head from the pumping station to the top of the hill here. Well, we better go and have a look at this tank and how you've set it up because you're three hours away yeah. and you need to make sure that this, all these troughs have access to water, don't you? Definitely. Tim, this is a pretty darn impressive tank. How many litres? A 250,000 litre Pioneer tank. And that runs the whole property in five kilometres of pipeline? Yep, definitely. Everything's all fusion joined and a two inch high pressure, high pressure water line. Trying to reduce labour. The biggest thing is just we set, set it up once, set it up right and hopefully never have to do any maintenance to it. Because labour is the most expensive part in running your farm operation, isn't it? Definitely. And also if, if you're away from the property as well, we just need to know, we need to make sure the watering system is working adequately to water the stock. How long would it take you to come up here and check the tank every day? I think it'd take at least a half an hour round trip by the time you drove to the top of the hill here to check the, check the tank every day. And that's not if you're in barrel? That's not if I'm in barrel. Because <laughs> you, you, you leave on a Friday, you're back on a Monday. Yeah. How long would it take for this tank to empty if you got a, a leak in the line down, say, 180 metres below? If we blew the water line here, we'd lose the tank within probably half a day. So in summer, for us, um, we need to know there's water here for the cattle. Um, if you're in the middle of summer in high temperatures and you've got no water, it's a recipe for disaster. So you're saving labour uh, and looking after your most precious resource on the farm. With the tank water monitor, tell me about that and how it works. So what we did was, um, as we were saying, because we had two properties and because I was away for a period of time from the property, 
and we didn't have anyone here at that point. We just needed to know there was water water here all the time. So yep. we um, we looked into the, the Gallagher watering system, the satellite uh, monitor. Yep. And for us, um, it was the knowing that the satellite would go overhead four times a day to read the monitor. So I've got an app on my phone that tells me um, the water level in the tank. Um, and I'd, I've also got a... Um, level two levels set in the tank um, that I get emails from to tell me when that water levels hit in the tank so even well. if you're not looking at your app and you ignore the alerts from your app you'll get an email on your laptop yeah on my phone so yeah, if, right. and obviously my phone pops up with an email in my inbox check my inbox obviously the tanks um, at a different level rather yep. than have to physically look at the monitor you actually get your email to say it's reached that level that you've you've indicated um, in the system. Now your pump down on the on the creek there yep. that you're pumping up to, uh, up to here from. Yep. Um, that runs on both 240 volt and solar, but you had a bit of a disaster with that pump recently. So a few weeks ago, uh, the wet end on the submersible pump actually failed. With that on the tank monitoring system on my phone I could pick it up that the water level in the tank was reducing and it wasn't filling with the way we've got the system set up here it's a pressure on demand so the tank should always be full yep. so I could see on the monitor that the level in the water was decreasing there was no flow into the tank so for us straight away we needed to, to know what was causing that and the first thing was to look at the look at the wet end of the pump or the ball it's a process of elimination if the tank's not full you've either got a leak or obviously you've got a supply issue and for us we didn't didn't have a leak so it was a supply issue so it was a process of elimination but the, the biggest thing to start with was knowing the tank was low and that, that was I guess the take-home thing with the monitor is knowing the water level was dropping in the tank without even coming up to the top of the hill if the if the tank and the system fails we've only got hours we haven't got days to worry about a water leak so with the system it just enables us to know there's an issue straight away now in terms of labor you reckon that it's probably already saved you money Oh, in it, terms of the setup and everything, because it's not very expensive. No, for, I was actually surprised the, the cost of the system. I thought it was um, very affordable. And for the first year, the monitoring system is free as far as the, the subscription. It's only after that you've got to pay an annual subscription to, to keep it online. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the saving um, with the labour costs well outweighs the subscription fee. Well, your subscription is what, about two or three hours of labour? Yeah. Yeah, and it's an hour a day just to check on it. Correct. Yep. Do the math. Kind of makes sense. Yep. <laughs> so I suppose the learning here is when you're running precision paddocks and a precision operation as you are, you're AIing all of your stock, you're yep. improving your herd continuously, yep. you're improving your pasture, you're fencing off your paddocks, you're putting troughs in all of your paddocks, you're pumping clean water into your livestock. You've got to monitor it because there's more things that can go wrong in those systems. Definitely. Now, Tim, all of this technology can either be run through Wi-Fi networks or off satellites. Now, you do have a Wi-Fi tower here. Yep. But in terms of power outages and that sort of thing, even though you've got the Wi-Fi tower here, you didn't want to go to the extra expense of setting up line of sight off a receiver. Yep. And you've gone with the satellite for security, haven't you? We, we just thought with a satellite option, it, it's 100% guarantee. Like the satellite's flying over four times a day measuring it. We don't have to worry about blackouts. We don't have to worry about line of sight with the Wi-Fi. It was just a no-brainer for us to, to know you're going to have it measured four times a day and not have to worry about any other failures as far as um, yeah, blackouts or any human error in it as well. So You know, there will be people who want a Wi-Fi network. They yep. can get a water monitor with a Wi-Fi network. Yeah. But you don't have to have one, satellites are just as good. We just didn't quite have the line of sight from the tank either to the house. If we had, if we were going to run with a Wi-Fi, we'd have had to put a, a large antenna on top of the tank to get that line of sight. And, yep. and for us, it was just, it was easier. All you had to do was bolt the monitor on top of the tank and the satellite did the rest. A few years ago, this probably wouldn't have been available. Yeah. But, but now it's just adapting the new things and obviously embracing them and trying to be more efficient while you're doing it. So good technology is improving your paddocks and improving your bottom line. Definitely. And the thing is you can do this remotely. As I was saying before, I can check the water from barrel three hours away rather than being on the farm here. I can, I can ring my guy here to say, OK, there is an issue from three hours away. Tim, good on you, mate. Thanks very much for having us out here. Not a problem. And finding out about your operation. It's going great guns. When's your next bull sale on? Second last Friday in August. We've got 85 bulls here in, in Gundagai. You want some darn good Angus bulls, get up to Gundagai, second last weekend of August. Yep, that's it. And if you want really good videos, have a look at the next one coming up and hit the subscribe button. We'll catch you later on, guys.